that PIMBO Guide 6th edition has 49 processes and in order to manage and look at those processes in some logical way, the PIMBO Guide also group these 49 processes under 5 process groups. In this video, I am talking about these 5 process groups. These 5 process groups are initiating, planning, executing, monitoring and controlling and closing process groups. So these are the 5 process groups of project management which groups these 49 processes. Now if you think of doing something from a quality management circles we keep knowing that everything is about plan, do, check, act. We plan something and then we try to execute as per the plan and if something doesn't work as per the plan we end up learning from it. We correct our future plans and that is we call monitoring control or acting on it. In the same way, if you look at our project management processes, the 49 processes, we can also group them under planning. So we have, have processes which helps us in doing planning. They get, get be, can be grouped under planning process group. Then we have a doing processes, the processes which helps us in executing the work as per the plan. And checking and acting, the part of checking and acting is monitoring and control and some part of acting is a replanning. So in project management uh, body of knowledge, we have planning, executing, monitoring and controlling process groups. And these three gives you a fair idea about planning, doing and responding to as you learn from your doing. Now, in, in order to start this cycle of planning doing, you also need to do some startup activities. And these startup processes are grouped under initiating process groups. So before I get into the cycle of planning, doing, checking, acting, I may need to identify stakeholders. I need to do something. The initial setup, that's an initiating process group processes. On the same way, once I am done with this cycle after doing 10 or 15 rotations for a given phase, I may want to move to the next phase. And in order to do that movement, I do the closing process group processes. So in PIMBO guide, we, we categorize these 49 processes under based on the type of work they are doing under initiating, planning, executing, monitoring and controlling and closing direction. The confusion which many test takers uh, 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 end up uh, uh, facing is they start relating these process groups with project management life cycle. These process groups are not stages in the project. It's not like you are doing initiating, then you are doing planning, then you are doing executing, then you are checking and acting and then you are closing. It's not a sequence, it's not a project life cycle. These kind of stages are defined in a project life cycle. How can you act without replanning? So the project life cycle, a generic way, may have phases like starting the project, organizing, carrying out the work, or ending the, the project, but inside these is, is uh, phases, you end up doing multiple rounds of plan, do, check, act. Multiple rounds of plan, do, check, act. You, you plan that, okay, I want to hire this, this particular team and work with them. Then you start working with them. You realize these people are not capable of, of doing this particular job. You want to replace the team. You replace the team and then you move forward. So what you did? You did planning. You, you figured out the team. You worked with them. You did doing. Then you figured out that it is not going as per the idea you, you wanted to proceed. Then you replace them and then you re redo the work. So in the whole project life cycle, we will have a processes related to initiating, planning, in executing, monitoring and controlling throughout the project phases. It's not at all recommended to have one type of process at a given project management life cycle stage. Now you may wonder, but still there should be some coordination between these five process groups and project life cycle. Now we learned there are various types of life cycles. There is a predictive life cycle. There is an adaptive life cycle. In a predictive life cycle, we try to predict the project scope process in the beginning of the project. So in a predictive life cycle, we may be doing a lot of planning processes in the beginning and then gradually it goes down. So many planning processes may happen. This, this black line denotes the planning processes during the initial stage if we are following the predictive life cycle. The executing may trail. 
after doing a significant amount of planning, you may have a lot of executing activities and gradually it, it, it goes like this. And the monitoring and control, which is more or less consistent depending upon how it goes, may last forever. Now, it is for a particular predictive life cycle. And initiating and closing keeps coming as we move from one phase to another. So here some initiating and closing activity will happen. Here some initiating and closing activity will happen because we are changing the project uh, phases. If you are following adaptive life cycle, the process may look very different. You may do continuous planning, maybe little bit. Some level of planning is always there because we keep planning work for two weeks in detail we keep replanning the work for even given day this is how we do in scrum where we plan for small sprints and every day using daily scrums we plan the work for that particular day or we re re or reorganize the the, the 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 team and the work for that particular uh, day the executing executing may also happen all the time so there is no necessarily a sequence and your life cycle may be a combination of these two. So the example which I am, I, am, I am quoting here just to denote where the concentration of planning and executing and closing might happen may vary from project to project, from organization to organization. So from this particular video, I want you to take away that we have five process groups. They are primarily focusing on on the core intent of the process. If the core intent of the process is starting up the phase, it is initiating process group. If the core intent of the process is closing up that particular phase somewhere here, then it's a closing process group processes. If the core intent of the process is planning or replanning, it's a planning process group process. If the core intent of the, uh, of the processes are doing, executing, it's a it's executing process group process. And if it's a monitoring and control, it's a monitoring and control process group process. Now, monitoring and control process group processes will have some common behaviors. All will look at the plan and the data from the execution and they will do variance analysis. That behavior is expected from all monitoring and controlling processes. Similarly, the executing process group processes will pick up the information from project management plan and will apply that project management plan in the real world. That's the behavior of all executing process group processes. Planning process group processes, either they will initiate the first time plan or they will revise the existing plan. And this is how initiating and closing can also be related to. Going forward, we will get into the details of each processes and the, the the segregation of process groups will become very, very clear as we proceed.